being your best with Trey Johnson. Changing the world, one thought at a time. We want to welcome you to Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You know, I'm excited about what God's speaking to the body of Christ, to people around the world. You know, there's a lot of things that are trying to distract us, to pull us off of becoming who God's called and created us to be. And with the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we have the ability to stay focused on God, to stay focused on what we're called and created to do. You know, there are people that are counting on you and I to rise up to be the warriors that we're called and created to be. So I want to encourage you to tell somebody about the show. Call them right now. Text them. Tell them they need to tune in because God's going to start revealing his heart about what is going on in the world today and how you and I can live in victory right in the middle of chaos. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hopefully everybody has their notes. Um, we're going to get into kind of what the Lord is saying about the next season. And, and if this is new to you, um, you know, God reveals his heart to men and women of God for the body of Christ. And with what I'm called to do, um, you know, I, I speak around the world. And so I not just speak lo uh, locally, um, that God begins to talk to me about what's going on with the body of Christ corporately in all the different denominations I have the privilege of speaking at, uh, the different territories I get to go to. And so I just want to get into that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night, and it was just, just it was quick, it was precise. I rolled over, put it in my phone, and he says, I'm making up for lost time. I'm making up for lost time. And I had a sense that it has to do with vision, the importance of vision for your family, for your business. And we're going to get into that over the next couple of weeks. But he says, I had a sense it had to do with vision. And he wants to make up for things that should have come to pass, but they haven't. I'm going to make up for lost time. He said, there are things in all of our lives that we prayed for, stood for, have known they should have come to pass for whatever reason they haven't. Well, we are in a new season. He is making up for lost time and things will come to pass. Say it, they will come to pass. And then he spoke this phrase to me. He says, we're in a season of things culminating. This is what the... The, the meaning of culmination means it's the highest or climatic point of something, especially as attained after a long time, the end or conclusion of something, the outcome of growth. Listen to this. The outcome of growth or development that represents an attained objective, the climax of a story, the final crowning achievement, or the end results of years of research the end point of something that you have been working towards or something that has been building up. So there's going to be a culmination of things. What we're stepping into is whatever that is. God's going to show you when it comes to your family, when it comes to your business, when it comes to your calling. Maybe you've been standing for years for certain things. There's going to be a culmination that is taking place and we're in it. And so the reason, once again, that we have the notes, we have God's word is because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then I kept hearing this, get them into the fields, the harvest is ripe. And you, you've known I've for, I don't know how long, a while now, I've been hearing in my spirit, man, the Lord saying, I want my harvest. But now he's saying, get them into the fields because the harvest is ripe. Meaning our sphere of influence, every one of us are gifted, every one of us are called, every one of us have talents, certain spheres of influence that we're called to, and there are people that God has on his mind connected to you that God is going to work in you and through you to influence them. He says, get them in the harvest. Not so we can hold up our Bibles, not so we can act religious, but so God can do a work in us and through us to reach the people around us. Remember, people are the most important things to God. God is saying, I am making up for lost time. And we've got to keep the big picture in our mindset. It's always about people. The number one, the greatest asset for God is people. 
I want to make God as rich as I possibly can make God. And that has to do with reaching people, with our gifts, our talents. We cannot sit on our backside and do nothing. It is time. Whatever area you're called to, the Spirit of God is saying, get them into the field. The church is designed by God to be a training center, a training center for reigning, to learn to rule and reign. And you know if you've come more than one time, you know we're not playing church. We're here with the mindset that we're going to learn, we're going to grow, we're going to develop, we're going to become, we're going to be the best us we can be. Why? Not just for our, our family and us. It is for the people that we're called and created to reach. Get them into the field because the harvest is ripe. Listen to John chapter 4, verse 34 through 38. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Notice he didn't say just to start his work. He said to finish his work. Now this is whenever the disciples and Jesus, they were on this trip. They got to the well. The disciples went off to get some food. They come back. They're trying to get Jesus to eat some food. And this is what Jesus said. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. In other words, when we know our purpose, when we know our vision, when we know why we're created the way we're created, why we're wired the way we're wired, it fills us on the inside. You can live a very dissatisfied life just working for money. You can live a very dissatisfied life and have lots of money. He's saying, my food, what nourishes me, what strengthens me is to do the will of my Father. He says to finish his work. Verse 35, do you not say it is still four months until harvest time comes? Look, say it, look. I tell you, raise your eyes and observe the fields and see how they are already white for harvesting. Already the reaper is getting his wages, and he who does the cutting now has his reward. For he is gathering fruit crop unto life eternal, so that he who does the planting and he who does the reaping may rejoice together. For in this the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a crop for which you have not toiled. Other men have labored and you have stepped in to reap the results of their work. Notice, remember what he said, get them into the field, the harvest is ripe. But he uses the word, he says, I need you to see what I see. And I'm asking God, even in our sleep, even in visions, even in dreams, that he's downloading into our heart and into our life, that we begin to see our business from his perspective. We begin to see our gifts from his perspectives, our talents, our callings, from his perspective. And even if you feel like you're not on track, God says, I'm making up for lost time. Every one of us have done things we should not have done. Every one of us have made dumb decisions. Come on, make me feel better. I'm not the only one, right? Because some of you are looking real holy out there. All of us are a work in progress. And he's saying, I'm making up for lost time. But we have to learn to position ourselves in order for him to work through us and to us and in us and around us. God is making up for lost time financially. God is making up for lost time relationally. God is making up for lost time in the areas of our gifts and talents and our callings. The Lord spoke this years ago to me. He says, Trey, I'll never skip the process. He says, but if you'll get in it, I will speed it up. So even if we've been on the sidelines, maybe we've been sitting on the bench, playing church, being religious, the Spirit of God, I'm asking Him to stir in us where you, you can't sit still until you're doing what you're created to do. Why? Because there are people called to you. Business people, there are people designed and connected to you, created by God for you to influence. Hey, thank you so much for watching the show today. I, I want to encourage you to go to our website, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com, and, and look around. You know, we got caps and T-shirts. We got some books that I've written. You can order the teaching from today. You can go to the YouTube channel. 
watch the shows one after the other, get caught up with where they're at. You can sign up for the daily devotionals that go out every morning. There's so many things that we have available to help add value to your life so we can all take a step closer to knowing God and being the best us we can be. And while you're there, I want you to pray about becoming a partner with this ministry as we go around the world. You know, every person that is saved and healed and delivered, you're a part of that. We're connecting our hearts, we're connecting our visions, we're connecting our resources to make a difference in this world. So thank you so much for praying for us, praying about becoming a part of what we're doing, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. He says, I'm making up for lost time. What does that look like in your life? I'm making up for lost time. I'm making up for lost time. Don't just hear me with the flaps on the side of your head. Hear me with your heart. God is saying, I'm making up for lost time. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, and I won't go through all of that, but Philippians 2, 5, let, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Let this same attitude and purpose... And mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this same attitude, what is attitude? An outward expression of an inward feeling. God is wanting you and I to see ourselves from his perspective. Proverbs 28, verse 1, he says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the uncompromisingly righteous are as bold as a lion. They are as bold as a lion. They are bold as a lion. See, when we realize that we're in right standing with God because of Jesus, there's some boldness about you when you pray. When we realize that we don't belong in the presence of God because we're so good, we belong in the presence of God because He's so good, there's some boldness about you. You pray for your husband's eyes, women, I'm talking to you here, your husband's eyes, to be restored. Men, you pray over your family with some boldness because the righteous are not bold as a kitty cat. They're not bold as a little praying uh, manna. They're, they're not bold as a little tulip. They're, they're bold as a lion. Why, why would God say they're as bold as a lion? Because when you look in the Word, God compares himself to a lion and an eagle. And he pulls out the attributes of the lion and the eagle, and he wants you and I to look at the lion and the eagle to understand who he is and to understand who we are. Braxton and Joseph, myself, Vic, we were in Africa, you know, last month, and, and the last day we had we'd preached, we'd done all this stuff, and we went on a safari, and, and that was a, a long, relaxing day. It was, uh, anyway, we saw caribou and zebra and hyenas and man they're ugly and you ugly you ugly your mama say you ugly anyway the hyenas I mean they are ugly and he's, we saw elephants I mean this the list goes on and on and of course Braxton he, he was just chomping at the bits to see a lion and so at the end of the safari or I don't know about halfway we saw a lion that was out in the pasture and this lion was eating his prey and and there were wild dogs behind him and there were uh, hyenas behind it waiting for him to get done eating and as we're, we're leaving there and I'm thinking about the lion and thinking about the way that God looks at himself and the way that he looks at us and he tells us the righteous are as bold as a lion and it reminds me of this story of this chief who was talking to this sheep herder in Zimbabwe and this sheep herder tells him, you know, I went out and I took my, I took my sheep out and they're grazing and, and all of a sudden I kept hearing this sound of a little cat. You know, and, and he said he got to, to looking around and kept hearing this cat. So he goes over and he finds and he opens up the brush and it's a little cub lion. And then he realizes, okay, if there's a cub lion, well, mom and dad are somewhere pretty close. So he shuts the grass back and he climbs up on the rocks there and he sits up there for hours and he's watching, you know, his, his sheep and everything. And he just keeps hearing this cub. And after several hours, he realized the mom and dad must have abandoned the cub. And so he goes down and he, he parts the grass, you know, and he's looking around, make sure mom and dad aren't around. He grabs the cub and he sticks it up underneath his shirt and he, he takes the little cub home and he goes in and he puts the sheep 
up in their pen and he takes the cub and he begins to wash the cub and feed the cub and he puts the cub out with the sheep. And, and so the cub lion, the little sheep lion, he, he grows up with the sheep. And so he doesn't know any different, but he thinks like a sheep and he, he smells like a sheep and he acts like a sheep. And, and so here it is two years into it and here he's big and he's strong and he's this massive lion, but because he's been hanging out with sheep and he thinks like a sheep and he smells like a sheep and he talks like a sheep and they're all out there and he even tries to eat grass like a sheep. He's not even made to eat grass, but he's trying to, to act like who he's hanging out with. And all of a sudden they hear this roar. And of course the sheep line, he picks his head up and the sheep, they take off and they take off running back to the, the cottage, you know, and they get in the pen and they're afraid. And the little sheep line picks his head up over the fence and he sees out across there and he hears a roar. And he sees this big beast and he has this little lamb in his jaws and blood's running down it. And it's like he's sitting there shaking it with his head saying, I am the king. And he gets back down in the sheep. And so the sheep and the sheep line, they didn't want to go out for several days. And so the shepherd had to find a new territory to take them to. And and so remember, he's hanging out with the sheep and he thinks like a sheep and he smells like a sheep and he talks like a sheep. And he hadn't growled. He's he's two years old. He hadn't growled at all. And and all of a sudden, they're they're out there and they're they're grazing and everything. The little little sheep line, he goes to get a drink of water and he looks at his reflection and it and it startles him and he sees this beast and he takes off running back into the to the pen but he realizes that the other sheep didn't follow him and he's thinking did did they not see the beast that I saw how come they didn't follow me how come they didn't come with me how come they didn't didn't run and so he as he's thinking about all this he goes back out into the pasture and he's looking at all the other sheep and he's like man I'm still thirsty so he he goes down and he starts to get a drink again and he he hears this and he looks up and the, and the beast that he sees is just right across the river and this beast goes Rah! and by this time the sheep line is just paralyzed in his tracks and he knows he can't go anywhere because if he takes off running the other lion's going to jump on him and the, and the lion just keeps roaring Rah! and you could feel the thunder and you could feel the power of the roar and it was just like the, the beast was seeing something in the lion that he should be but he wasn't and he was going to draw it out Rah! and he just began to roar and on the inside the the sheep line he tried and he was frustrated and he knew that something was supposed to happen and so with all his might he gets up and he goes (laughs) but the beast didn't stop because he saw something more inside the sheep line and so he stood in front of him and he could feel the thunder and he'd get muttered and he got mad and frustrated because he knew that there was something more on the inside of him. And all of a sudden from the inside of the little sheep line, Rah! but then after he did it, the beast began to back back into the jungle because he drew out what was really inside of the sheep line. He was never created to think like a sheep, smell like a sheep, talk like a sheep. But he stood in front of him, and as he is backing into the jungle, every once in a while, he And now the sheep line had a decision to make. He would look back at the cottage and the safety of the pen and the comfort of somebody feeding him every day and somebody protecting him every day, or he looked into the jungle and he saw the unknown. He saw somewhere he'd never been before. And he'd look back at safety and comfort, and then he'd look at the unknown, and the other beast line would continue to walk back. Just, just to remind him, you're made for more. And as he backed into the jungle, the little sheep line, because he knew he was made for more, decided, I'm going to go into the unknown, and I'm going to be who I'm called and created to be. Let me be the lion that's standing in front of you, saying to you and I, there's more in you than what you're walking in right now. The righteous are as bold, talk to me, as a lion. Let this same attitude be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Revelations 5, 5 on your notes, it says, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remember, God is saying, I'm making up for lost time. Get them into the field because the harvest is ripe. James chapter 1, verse 22. 
He says, but be doers of the word, obey the message, and not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed in his doing his life of obedience. The righteous are as bold as a lion, and like that lion looked into the water the first time, and it startled him because he had never seen the real lion that he was. James, the half-brother of Jesus, is telling you and I, if we keep looking into the Word of God, we're going to see the reflection of who we truly are. And who we truly are is righteous. Who we truly are is forgiven. Who we truly are, we're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. We're champions. We're victorious. We're blessed. We are healed. But we got to keep looking into the Word. And not only looking, but have an intention to do. He says that is the person that is blessed in their doing. Why does he compare you and I to a lion? Because, see, a lion thinks different. A lion isn't the biggest. That lion isn't bigger than an elephant. The lion is not bigger than the hippo. The lion is not bigger than the giraffe. But the lion is the king. Why? Because the lion thinks different. When he shows up at the watering hole and he sees an elephant, you know what he thinks, Joseph? He thinks lunch. But the thinking of an elephant, when he shows up at the watering hole and he sees the lion, you know what he thinks, Ben? Eater. Thinking affects the way we believe, and the way we believe it affects the way we behave. Our belief always drives our behavior, and God looks at you and I, and He's saying, Rah! there's more in you, but we've got to think in alignment with God's Word before we ever believe God's Word and act according to God's Word. Remember, our belief always drives my behavior. When I believe that God's in me and for me and on my side, I'm going to act different. When I believe that God always watches over His Word to perform it, I'm going to pray different. Whenever I believe God's Word, I'm going to behave like I believe God's Word. So I'm not talking to you about being some religious person that has a bunch of lip flapping but no action. Talking about us positioning ourselves in relationship with Almighty God and seeing God standing in front of your gift and talent and calling and business and future, and Him saying to you, Ethan, I am making up for lost time. Rawr! But I need you to have the same attitude and mindset that Jesus had. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the Lion of of the tribe of Judah. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Say it, God is making up for lost time. So we want the attitude of a lion to position ourselves to receive in what God is saying. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. This is the first message that Jesus preached. He reveals his assignment, his purpose. He says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to change your mind. His first message went after the mind. He's saying, okay, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Repent doesn't mean to drop all your past and feel bad about it and snot and cry and bawl. If that's what you, you need to snot, cry and bawl, or whatever you need to do there. But it means now change the way you think. Change the way you think about God. Change the way you think about yourself. Change the way you think about church. Change the way you think about the blood. Change the way you think about the Holy Spirit. Change the way you think about the power of the Word. Change the way you think the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Every person on this planet, we are designed to connect to the one who made us. We are designed to live in relationship with Almighty God and rulership upon the earth. But it takes the right mindset. The the righteous are 
are as bold as a lion. In order to get results, in order for this to become a reality, it's going to take some boldness, some bold prayers, some bold action, some bold tenacity. He's saying, let's change the way we think. I look at you as a lion. I don't look at you as a worm. I don't look at you as unworthy. I don't look at you as a nobody. God looks at you and I through the power of His blood, and He sees you and I as sons and daughters of the Most High God. He sees us as kings and queens and winners and blessed and healed. That's the way God sees us. But it takes us looking in to the reflection of His Word to begin to see ourselves the same way. He says the righteous are as bold as a lion. The lion thinks differently. The lion believes differently. The lion behaves differently. And Jesus says, repent Change your thinking, change your mind. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Rome, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And he says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas, its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good, acceptable, and perfect in His sight for you. What was he saying? When he, so, so the prefix re, R-E, in front of any word brings it back to the original. So when he says, I need you to renew your mind, he said, I need you to take the mind that you have and go back and line it up with the original mind. How do we get the original mind of God? Through His Word and by His Spirit. When my thinking lines up with what God's Word says, then my believing is going to line up, then my expectations are going to line up, then my words are going to line up, then my behavior is going to line up. How can the lion show up and not be the biggest, the fastest, the smartest, but show up and he's considered to be the king because he thinks different than everybody else? I know there's a lot to process as we listen to God's Word and we absorb this teaching and we make a decision that we're going to be doers of God's Word. But also tonight, I want to ask you to make a decision. I'm not going to be a person that draws back, but I'm going to be a person that goes forward. I'm going to be a person that makes progress. I'm going to be a person that knows God. You know, regardless of where you're at in your relationship, maybe you're strung out watching this. Maybe you have a needle in your arm. Maybe you're... Uh, committing adultery at the moment. Wherever you're at, God wants a relationship with you. You know your sin doesn't run God away. He wants a relationship with you. And once we connect to God and we stay focused on Him, that's when our life starts changing. We start changing the way we think, changing the way we believe, and our life begins to change, and we begin to walk in the delivering power of God. So you're not hopeless. There is hope, and His name is Jesus. So if you want to settle where you're going to spend eternity, you want to change your life, you want to turn things around, I want to invite you to pray this very simple prayer with me, and I want you to do it out loud. I want you to believe in your heart these words that we're saying, and right where you're sitting or standing or driving or wherever you're at, the life of God comes into you. You come from the kingdom of darkness, you come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and your life will be changed forever. Would you pray this with me? Would you just say, Father God, today is the day that I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead to give me life. And right now, I accept that life. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. And according to your word, I am forgiven. I am cleansed. And I'm now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hey, if you said that prayer for the very first time, we want you to let us know. We want to get information into your hand. We want to help you get connected to a good Bible-believing church in your area. Hey, it's a daily process. I want to encourage you, tune back in again next week. Go to the YouTube channel, the podcast, sign up for the daily devotionals. We've got a lot of things that we're doing to help add value to your life. My name's Trey Johnson. I'll see you again soon.